has a judge for our annual Youth of the Year event, which you'll learn about a little bit more a little later on. And helping put on this wonderful event and bringing on so many people, uh, so many good people together. Thank you, Dr. George. Thank you. Last but not least, every year we have a wonderful list of sponsors, and we could not do any of this without them. You'll see their names around the room and in the program booklet. This year, for the first time ever, I'm proud to announce that we had eight separate organizations that donated ten thousand dollars each. Thank you to all, and thank you to all of the organizations that continue to partner us, partner with us throughout the year. Uh, particularly, I want to give special thanks to Park Bank, who has been a tremendous donor and advocate for our organization for many, many years. <laughs> this is the body of the man that we celebrate. An amazing human being, a golden heart, a brilliant mind, a great scholar, and honestly, just a pure gentleman. And I'd love to be here and to say a few words about him. So I'm going to now read the, 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 the speech that I've written for you, but it's still coming. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. George is a remarkable person. He really not only is he an accomplished physician, he is also a sharp lawyer and a savvy businessman. He has been a one valuable asset to Rowan University as a member of both our foundation board of directors and our Rowan SOM School of Osteopathic Medicine Dean's Development Council. More important than, the, than Dr. George's impressive legal and medical credentials, and let me tell you, don't, don't underestimate those. I mean, think this young man went to school, got a bachelor's degree, went to University of Louisville, who beat our basketball with dear University of Michigan <laughs> basketball a few years ago. So in that regard, I don't like him, but, <laughs> but so the man goes in there and gets a medical degree, and then after that, get a new law degree. That's incredible. For those of us who have been in the study, when you sit down, when you there spend four or five years that you have to work day and night to get those degrees, and you just do it, that speaks only about the, the level of interest. So, sir, you're an amazing man. <laughs> As many of you know, Dr. George was involved in a life-threatening accident in 2016, but thanks to the amazing medical professions and his resilience, Dr. George has made a tremendous recovery and is active again with business, medicine, and voluntary activities. Dr. George embodies all of the characteristics of a person worthy of such an honor and is a role model to the youth of our community. He's an inspiration to me personally, and it is my distinct honor to congratulate Dr. James George as he receives such a well-deserved reward award for, you, for this evening. Tonight, we honor Dr. James George and celebrate the tremendous impact he has had on so many throughout our community. Congratulations, my dear friend. You're an amazing man, and I hope you have an amazing evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. and I am the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Gloucester County. This evening is just amazing. My heart is just pounding right now because we have crossed some major crossroads here. We pretty much have doubled our attendance here tonight. We have pretty much doubled our fundraising efforts. This couldn't have been done without the great people that are here tonight and are honoring. Dr. George, you have some amazing friends. Amen. Thank you for sharing that with us. It has been an absolute honor and pleasure to lead this organization over the last year. If some of you that were here last year, this was my first time, and so I had only been with the organization for about three months. But I have to say, through the efforts of my board, 
who helped with my onboarding and my staff, we have done some amazing things this year. We have so much to be proud of. We've come so far. And this room right here tonight is so evident of that. You guys have come here to see the work that we do. We have, I, I hope you had some time to go and see the display. This is the work of our kids. This is what our staff of the organization do every single day. They work to put smiles on our kids' faces. And I would like to just take a moment to have my staff in the back stand because I would like to recognize them and their efforts. <laughs> They are the reason we're here. This is the reason we come to work every single day. So I'd like to take a few minutes to recognize some of them back there as well. They're the ones that do that work. I know while Chris um, recognized my board, I, or what I would like to say about Chris, I would like to congratulate him too because he is our outgoing board chair. He is the one that has been with us for the last two and a half years, guiding me and working with me to help me in my onboard. And so, Chris, thank you so much for the work that you've done. Not alone with all of our so, what I'm going to do is give you just a little overview of what we're going to do this evening. We are going to, of course, have a great meal. And we are going to do some welcomes. We have a number of individuals that are going to speak. On behalf of our honoree, Dr. James George, we are so, so happy to have you here. We had a lot of fun this past year. Dr. George came and visited a lot of our clubs. I hope you saw some of the pictures. He's like another true advocate for us. There's many organizations here that I, there's just so many to name, that help our clubs succeed. They give us the resources. They give us the tools to produce those wonderful kids back there and the work that they're going to do in their future lives. So thank you, Dr. George. Um, I would also like to take a moment to call upon my Glassboro Center Director and some of our kids. We're going to come up and he is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. That's the Wow. Dr. Bonner is a lifelong resident of Gloucester County. He is the medical director of the Emergency Medical Department at Inspira Medical Center in Woodbury. And he serves as the president of the medical staff. He is also serves as a member of the Inspira Hospital Board. Dr. Bonner began his career in emergency medicine with Dr. George in 1988 in Woodbury. Let's give Dr. George, let's give Dr. Dr. Bonner a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, so far everyone's been very nice to you, Doctor. <laughs> I met the good doctor in 1984, standing on the filter pad of his swimming pool, <laughs> teaching him how to use the pool at this new house. <laughs> I had built that swimming pool during the summer between my first and second year of medical school, and I was sold with the house. <laughs> so I meet this cat, and he's standing there and he's, I'm explaining to him how to backwash and how to recirculate and how to run the timers. And he said, what would you charge me to take care of this? And Randall, there were paper hangers, there were plumbers, there were roofers, there were masons, there were contractors everywhere. So I doubled my price. 
doctor said that's a little strong. I'll be right back. So I thought he went to get some money. He came back with a tape recorder for me to dictate the instructions. I had done this before, so I knew a man in trouble who could not yet admit he was in trouble. Yes. So I dictated all the instructions, and you know, I saw all these people working, and I said to him, what do you do? And in classic Dr. George fashion, he looked over his glasses at me and said, that's confidential. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, there was a four-page spread in the local newspaper about this doctor, lawyer, businessman, James George. So clearly I had not made it into the inner circle at that time. <laughs> so we got through the first meeting and I left the man alone because I knew it wouldn't take long. I gave him my phone number. <laughs> and when the pool got green and the kids were like, Dad, you screwed up the pool. Mary said, call that guy. And I came back and I got my price. <laughs> so I felt pretty good about myself. I, mean, I read this thing about this talented guy and I had just gotten my price. So the theme of the night is building bridges. And Doctor was part of the bridge of my medical career, as you all know. And it came time for me to finish my residency. I was looking for a job. And I started moonlighting for these fellas. And doctor hired me. And, you know, he got me across the bridge to a job in medicine. What I didn't know was that it was a significantly below market rate. <laughs> and he had gotten even. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> speak after, the, 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 you know, the margins are now wide. You can go, go wherever you need to go. With that, we're going to move the program along. We're going to get to dinner. After dinner, we'll start the rest of the speeches. The Maynard D's will come to your table and let you know when it's time to eat. Enjoy. <laughs>
Jackson, you go first, Tom. Feel out the audience, and I'll go in <laughs> first. I, first, I'd like to uh, extend congratulations from Adam, who was very disappointed that he couldn't be here tonight. Unfortunately, his job has taken him out of state, and he's away. So he said, congratulations, and a great job. And I'd like to thank the Boys Club and Girls Club of Gloucester County for asking me to say a few words about Dr. George. My friendship with Dr. George probably dates back longer than most in this room. Uh, it goes back to the early 70s, right after Dr. George came to South Jersey. Uh, in fact, how long ago was that? Well, old Doc Bonner was young Doc Bonner. He was young Jim Bonner. <laughs> he was just graduating high school and he was thinking he was going to college and he thought, well, I have a fallback. I can take over my dad's bill for if it doesn't work out. Uh, I was just a college student working at Super's Health Hideout, which actually was hit out on a pig farm and was still broke. <laughs> Any of you from the area can remember back in those days when pig farms dotted Delcy Drive and the smell on summer night. I think Dr. George and I both claim that for our hair loss. <laughs> but um, I knew Dr. George's uncle Fred, which is a story in itself. Um, at that time, he was probably the most, not probably, he was the most renowned orthopedic surgeon in the area. And you talk about intimidating, I'm a high school, I'm a college kid you know, managing a health club, and here I am playing handball with Dr. Fred George, and very much intimidated and overwhelmed, and we got into court, and I found out what a competitor he was, and he pushed me and kicked me like everybody else, and I learned a lot from him about competition. I also learned if anything ever happened to me, he's the guy I wanted to operate on, because he hated to lose. It was at that time that Dr. Fred George introduced me to young Dr. Jim George, who was just moving to South Jersey and was a member of Supers. It was very much fun watching Dr. Jim George and Dr. Fred George compete on the handball court. Dr. Fred George really liked beating Dr. Jim George. <laughs> and I will tell you this, I'm very glad that he didn't give up his day job because I'm not sure he would have had quite the success in handball as he had as a doctor. But as the years passed and we moved in a different direction and took different paths in our lives, we kind of lost contact. I kept up to date following his kids at Haddonfield and and talking to Jimmy and Steve Murtall and, and Rita Magnata, who all worked for him. But ironically, we rekindled our relationship at Scott Kinsey's house back in 2016. It was one month later that Dr. George had his accident. And through my affiliation with the Adam Tal Farrah Foundation and with McGee, Dr. George has become a major, major source of strength, courage, and inspiration in my life. Should I be surprised that that same tenacity that young Dr. George displayed on the courts of supers came into full force once he faced his injury? He faced his injury and he refused to be defeated. He became a major, he became the mayor of McGee, <laughs> an artist, a cheerleader for the patients, a confidant for many who were sharing in the same situation that he was. He face this injury, and you talk about a gut punch, he took it, and he came out swinging. When most people would have just encumbered and died and just like gave up, he rose up. Spend five minutes with Dr. George, and you don't come away smiling and feeling better about yourself. You really have major problems. <laughs> no person is worth this award more than he is. In your career as a medical doctor, constantly save lives, Dr. George. But since your injury, you not only save lives, but you save hearts, you save souls, and you save spirits. You, Dr. George, are an inspiration to me and everyone else in this room. If John Kennedy were alive today and were writing a sequel to his book, Profiles and Courage, chapter one would read James George, MD. Thank you, Dr. George. God bless you. I love you. Yeah. Pretty good bills, huh? Good food. So, Dr. George, tuning up the old resume with another award early, huh? Are you looking for work? I want you to know how much I appreciate being one of the warm up acts for Joe Devine. 
So, Dr. George, a classic underachiever <laughs> who graduated from law school and medical school on the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a critical care emergency physician and an attorney, which begs the question, did you own your own ambulance service? <laughs> You know, Dr. George wanted to be a physician since he was just a little tight in kindergarten. You all know that? And in fact, he asked one of his classmates to play doctor. <laughs> oh, but not to worry. All he did, he made her wait 45 minutes and he double billed the insurance company. <laughs> And it's a true story. <laughs> well, it is my privilege to be able to personally add McKee's congratulations to Dr. George for being appropriately recognized for his seemingly endless acts of generosity and support to not one community, but every community you've ever touched. You know, we hear a lot these days about the world's loss of civility, the self-centered nature of so many people. But Dr. George is at the opposite end of that continuum. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And with Dr. George, you have an award winner tonight who is a unique individual with a brilliant mind who also generally cares about all those around him. Now, I was told that there's an open bar tab for the speaker who has the shortest talk. <laughs> So I will end by saying that Dr. George, you're a gentle person's gentle person, a nouveau Picasso, a caring philanthropist, and someone that I am, am honored to know and to call my friend. I love you, man. Thanks. Congratulations. Great job. All right, next up is Lynn Massengale, Lynn and Jim and others, Randall, um, John Staley, John, I am standing up. <laughs> Started Team Health back in the early 80s, right? And um, I met Lynn on a Sunday night. Doc, I was working a shift in the ER. Dr. George came in and said, I need you outside. And I thought, oh, shit. <laughs> and there was this, I get in the back of Dr. George's Cadillac, and there's this guy sitting in the front seat, and he talks a little different than I do. And he said, the first words Lynn said to me were, this is an SEC violation. <laughs> When Jim got hurt, the first person that we called was Frank Levin, and Lynn Massengale was the second person that we called. So Lynn and Jim have been together for a long time. Uh, Team Health is a wonderful organization. We're proud to have you here, Lynn. Come on up. Thanks so much, Jim, and thanks for this opportunity to be here. Uh, having known and worked with Jim now for more than 20 years, it's a true honor be here with my team health colleagues, Leif Murphy, our CEO, Dr. Neff, Dr. Staley, we just mentioned, our co-founders, and almost all of our senior leadership team. We're all proud to be here. Um, on behalf of all of us, thank you to the Boys and Girls Club for so wonderfully recognizing our friend and co-founder, Dr. George, this year. Also, our warmest regards to his lovely wife, Mary. Uh, all of us believe that behind every good man, there's at least a better woman. And in Jim's case, that is by God the truth. And also his lovely children, Abby, Alexa, and Jimmy. It's great to know all of you and to see you here. Uh, I'd also like to briefly mention a few things about Jim you know, that you may or may or may or not know. It's very hard to follow some of these folks, actually. And I didn't think I talked that differently, to tell you the truth. Uh, first, a little morbid doctor humor. Jim, uh, while Jim doesn't generally like being the center of attention, I know he's really happy to be hearing these things rather than worry what we might be saying if we were at his funeral. <laughs> uh, Jim and I talk a 
lot, mostly about work, which he really likes to talk about, all of you know, and a lot about family. We shall share our best husbanding and parenting stories and advice, and all of you know how well that's working. Uh, so you have to be the judge of that. Uh, second, in all the years of working with Dr. George, as the students would say, as many of you know, he's a very hard grader. He's a hard grader on all fronts. Uh, by that I mean, in our case, anytime we thought we had some great idea that all happened at work, we always try to pilot it and prove it and work out all the bugs before we, before we proposed it to Dr. George. Because he would always find what was wrong with it before we uh, had it figured out and before he even could suggest it, we had to make sure it was perfect. The fact that he's chosen to be a significant supporter of the Boys and Boys Girls Club speaks volumes, I think, about the organization. He just doesn't give his time, his energy, and his resources to things that don't matter to him and that he hasn't vetted very, very well. Third, acknowledging that the Boys and Girls Club of Mission and Education and mentoring young people is important. I want to just mention that Dr. George has spent his professional life dedicated to two things, a nearly fanatical commitment to work and the client hospitals that have chosen to work with him and the team, and second, providing education and development to all with whom he's worked to ensure the very best in patient care. He just doesn't suffer fools much on any front and definitely not as it relates to taking care of the client and taking care of the clinicians and taking care of the patients. Few have given more than him, and few have expected more of his colleagues than he does. We respect him, we fear him a little bit, but we mostly respect him a lot. Finally, another of the pillars of the Boys and Girls Clubs is a commitment to character development. Setting aside for a moment that Dr. George is quite a character, as you all know, in all seriousness, all of us who know him have experienced his dedication to always doing the right thing. Without regard to consequences, Time and time again, I've seen him lead us down the path of what's the right thing to do at this moment. And there have been bad consequences of that economically, there have been consequences in many ways, but it was just never a question if you went to jail. He was going to steer you gently or not so gently back to doing the right thing. You always count him to do that. On behalf of all of us at Team Health, thanks to the Boys and Girls Clubs for recognizing him. Thanks to all the sponsors and attendees for showing their support. And thanks, Dr. George, for being a personal and professional inspiration to every one of us in this room. While Patty's coming up, I just want to tell you, when I started this night, I had a voice, but hanging around with Dr. is like sitting with the bride at the wedding. You can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Patty? It's a pleasure to be back up here because this is the crowning moment. This is our opportunity to ask for your support in helping us keep our programs going. We cannot do this without your generosity and your support. We're going to do it a little different. How many people here have cell phones? Raise your hand. I'm oh, fine, everybody has cell phones. You're probably texting your, your kids right now. I'll be home late, but I'll be there. We're going to use uh, a program called Give by Sell. And as you can see on the screens, we've been tasked with a very, very, very high, high amount. You know, Dr. George doesn't come without work. Right? I've been hearing all these stories. He's given us a challenge. And that is what we want to do tonight is raise $15,000 because he is going to match it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. George. And the way we're going to do it is with the use of your cell phones. It's a, you have the instructions on your table, you just text that number, put in your name, the dollar amount, and that thermometer is going to grow. And that's going to show us how we are going to raise $15,000 today, because I know all of us can do this together. It takes all of us. But first, I want you to get a little more understanding of what it is we do. 
And what I would like to do is introduce what we call our Youth of the Year. Our Youth of the Year is what embodies the Boys and Girls Club. When our kids go through our programs, starting at age five, and going through the program each year, they are learning more and more and more. And as Dr. Massimo said, we're teaching them about leadership. We're teaching them about academic success. We're teaching them all of those qualities to help them have successful careers, have successful lives. And our youth of the year is on the staff to do the same. And the first person that hit the slide with me was Miss Patty. <laughs> Miss Patty has been an awesome, awesome inspiration. I am so glad to have her as our CEO. She came with a big old bright idea. She told us what the bar was. And she told us where we were headed. We're on our way. Dr. George, thank you so much. Dr. George has come into our clubs to visit with us. And our kids have enjoyed his company. And then he came back to the club just a week ago and said he had to get some more energy and that was the place to be. What you're doing here tonight is you're answering the call. You are saying yes to the invitation. You have RSVP. This room right now is amazing to me and all of the people that are in it. Everybody here is what builds that bridge. I'm going to tell you how it starts. A bridge is to get you from one place to the other, to get you across what might be some rough waters, what could easily be a nice, even brook. But sometimes the waves get a little heavy and the tide gets a little rough. And there has to be a bridge. We start out with a little five-year-old. Matter of fact, two five-year-old twins that come into my club in November, I'm sorry, in September. When they came into the club, they were four years old. Now, mom had been calling me for a while. I can't take them till they're five. Well, here they came in September because October, they were turning five. Miss Chrissy, in my time at the Boys and Girls Club, met her challenge. These two twins, Ethan and Eli. Ethan and Eli gave me a run for my money, and I said, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. That's where we started. Now we get to the bridge. We get to the bridge where one of the twins is not doing what he's supposed to do, and he's having a conversation with Miss Anjanette. And when he's having a conversation with Miss Anjanette about his behavior, he turns to her and says to her, Miss Ann, don't give up on me. Aww. Little five-year-old, now we're on the bridge. Now we have an opportunity to take him and his twin brother to the other side, to get to the place where Miss Zinga has arrived, to get to the place where they will find opportunity. They will find new life. They will find another chance. They will find a difference. The bridge is to get them to that place. And you are our bridge builders. You are their opportunity. You are what will bring them to their success. You are the bridge builders who will produce future bridge builders. No doubt in my mind. The pitter-patter of those little feet as they come into the club may sound like something out of this world to most people. But to me, it's an opportunity. It's a chance to change a life, to make a future brighter, to make a difference. Everything that you do here tonight is an effort to make a difference in a child's life. I appreciate the RSVPs. I appreciate the sold out sign that was on the website this morning. I appreciate you all showing up to make a difference. You are the bridge and you are going to take them to a much brighter future. We have little people in our custody every single day. 
and it is the it is the privilege and the honor to serve them. What I do every day, some people say, I don't know how you can do it. I don't know how I could not. It is what I do. It is what I love. It is what I enjoy. And everything that you do, it is what we need. We have an outlet. We have an open spot. But that outlet does not get power until you plug in. You will generate the power that it takes to get them to the other side of the bridge. I appreciate you for plugging in. Thank you. Yeah. Jimmy, John Graham occasionally. And 
Jim will say, hey, we're going to have dinner. And I'll say, well, that's great. So I figure we're going to go over and have dinner, and Jim's going to treat the dinner. But usually, every night that somebody walks in, somebody has to get their credit card, right? Because Jim's not paying. But really, what really filled it out for me was the following. You know, I figured if I'm going there, i got to go buy great desserts. So I go to this place called Sweet Eats in Voorhees, which has the most remarkable desserts. And I bring this whole full tray of desserts, and we get done eating, and Jim says, Hey, would somebody mind going into the freezer? I have ice cream bars in there. So I figure, well, this is pretty cool. It's got to be like these dove bars. They're from Aldi. They're it's delicious! Six bars for three dollars. The guy really, the guy really is really cheap. It's, I mean, no, no, come on, Jim. It's 12 bars for 229. I'm sorry, 12 bars for 229. You know, and and we, just, we just can't keep it up. It's, it's just remarkable. You know, but in all seriousness, I could stand here for hours making fun with you because you're a good friend and you made fun with us because we laugh at each other. You know, we actually even laughed at the fact that Jimmy Bonner was once a point guard at Gloucester Catholic. <laughs> I must have been a really tall age. Tommy after going, were you there at the time? But no, seriously, there's no greater business partner than you. You're a true gentleman. You're a scholar, and as I told your colleagues, some of your colleagues on Team Health last night, our partnership with you predates them, but is really solidified because of your relationship you've had with us. You've always been an honest gentleman. You work with us, and most importantly, you care about the people you you help help career-wise and help care for. We have a tremendous amount of emergency room physicians in this market in New Jersey now, throughout the country actually, because you made a dedication and helped train them through the School of Osteopathic Medicine, and that is a big tribute to you. And you know, Stephen Covey once wrote a book, it's called First Things First. And in that book, he asked everyone to think about where are you, think about being in the casket at your funeral. And it's you. What do you want people to say about you? That I'm cheap. Besides being cheap. <laughs> Actually, if we're still around, we're putting Aldi bars. We're making your breakfast on Aldi bars. Here, do I have that way with those Aldi bars or what? <laughs> but honestly, what it says is what people would say about you. And they would say everything that people have said here tonight. But most importantly, they'd say, in my mind, a legend. And in life, you only have the opportunity to meet some legends along the way. Unfortunately for us this past Sunday, a Dr. DeMarino and I, who long time knew Dr. Rothman, is another one of those legends. You are one of those legends. And one of those legends does not only mean that you've made an impact in your career and the community you live in, but most importantly, you've been an inspiration to so many people. When you had your injury, as you know, your doctor and I are very close friends. As a matter of fact, he sends his regards tonight because he could not be here. But Dr. Jallo said to me that the amazing thing about this show is that he was a remarkable patient. Because, you know, people were torturing me to go do things that I didn't really believe in. Jim Bonner, right? <laughs> and he said, but I was the neurosurgeon, and I really felt that if we can get him over the hump, that this person will not only recover, but he would make a great life. And Dr. George, before you started and had this injury and afterwards, you have not changed one bit. Your personality is an inspiration to us and makes us feel good every single day because you didn't let this drag you down. You know, in life they say, you know, the way to success is not through an elevator, but it's through climbing every stair. You, before you had this injury, climbed every single stair. And your impact and this whole South Jersey community has been second to none. And I want to thank you for that. And I'm going to leave you with a little words by Ralph Waldo Emerson, which, you know, he has some great words, but this talks about success. To laugh often and much, which you do, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children and adults both, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and to endure their betrayal at times, to appreciate beauty to find the best in others, to leave the world a much better place, whether for a child, which you're doing here tonight, for a friend or for a loved one, or to redeem a social condition, which you have worked on throughout your high, entire life. To know even one life has, breath, has a breath that's even easier because you live. That's the measure of success. My friend, we love you. 
We love that you're cheap once in a while. And most importantly, <laughs> thank you for just tonight because this is a deserving honor for you. It's a great tribute to the Boys and Girls Club to have you as the recipient and someone who's committed to them. Thank you. Joe, I've never heard a South Philly guy quote Emerson. <laughs> our kids. They are our club members. These are the kids that you're supporting. So we're going to have a little round of applause. The other announcement I would like to make in our give is you all have pieces of paper on your tables. If you're not comfortable with charging or anything like that, you can complete those forms. Raise your hand and we'll come get them and we'll put them up as a pledge. I know some people don't like to do that, so we're giving you another option um, to use that form and you can either write a check or however you'd like to do it and we'll get a process, trust me. Thank you all. All right, uh, next up is John Matzinger. Where's John? Right here. Thank you. John is the cl Chief Clinical Officer at Virtua and has a long relationship with Dr. George. He's going to share some of that with us. Thanks. Well, I don't know whether to be disappointed or not. I've toured Jim through our facilities about 100 times. I never got an ice cream bar. Ah! <laughs> but first off, I want to thank the Boys and Girls Club for this magnificent evening. And Jim, thank you for everything. Everybody in this room, you've given to them one way or another, and you are truly an inspiration. You really do exemplify the building bridges and improving lives. But I think what you've done for the community of South Jersey, it's remarkable. You truly embody what it means to give back. You, you've, you've, you've given to our medical staff, but you've also given to our most impoverished. You've given to the children in our community, whether that be at Camden, in our educational center. I mean. Hearing what I saw today, it's not a surprise at all. I've seen it in the 10 years that I've known you. And over that 10 years, I was a young chief medical officer. I could always call you and ask you. You always had advice, um, some things that I might not have wanted to hear, I heard. Um, but if I ever needed anything, you were the guy. Um, if, you know, every once in a while my phone would ring, it's like Cayman Islands. It's, oh. <laughs> it's the only call I've ever gotten from the Cayman Islands, it was you. <laughs> Then I was also jealous I wasn't in the Cayman Islands. Uh, we get to that later. Um, but really, if you think of the amount of lives you've touched, it, it's remarkable. I was actually with you two nights before the accident, and we were uh, at our Power to Heal campaign, and, and then heard two days later, and just utter shock. But every time we would see somebody, that it would always be, well, how's Jim? And we would hear about how you were clawing back and getting better. And you truly exemplify never giving up, always looking forward, always pushing forward, and making sure you make a better life for you and everyone around you. On behalf of Virtua, I just want to say thank you. On behalf of, behalf of Southern New Jersey, thank you. And we could not do half the things we do without people like you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That, that was a, John, that was a very nice segue. Uh, our next speaker, John D'Angelo, I don't think will be that nice. Uh, we, we know and love John. Um, the other night at the uh, Philadelphia Business Journal outing, which was about four hours, John had the singular phraseology for capturing the moment when you asked, is the bathing suit competition over yet? <laughs> Without further ado, John D'Angelo. Thank you, Jim. Uh, well, I called Jim and I said, uh, how long do you want me to talk? He said, three minutes. Obviously, Divine didn't get the same message. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, for three minutes, 
No, but but I gotta say, you know, this is a, a great evening. Um, and and Jim, they couldn't pick a better guy. Uh, but I gotta tell you, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the theme for the evening is building bridges. And you're one of the few people who can build a bridge to get Devon and I up on the same stage <laughs> and say nice things about you. <laughs> You know, and, and one of the things that uh, I, I've always admired about Jim uh, is a great dresser. Uh, if you notice today, you know, I have a shirt on that basically looked about the same. I didn't get the message about the bow tie. But, um, but his other side is uh, we, we opened our innovation center uh, last night, yesterday, and, and Jim is there, and he has orange shorts on. <laughs> okay? You know, and he's, he's got a very natty shirt that matches that, but he's got orange sneakers on. <laughs> you know, so he says, I got a match. <laughs> you got a match. And he always does. He always does. You know, and I think from, I haven't known, uh, I mean, I've known Jim for a lot of years, but not nearly as closely as I've known him in the last five or six. Um, and. Uh, I mean, one of the things Joe said is very true. He's, he's very polite, doesn't talk very loudly. He, he can really talk very politely in telling you to go to hell. He's very good at it. <laughs> uh, and, and when you get summoned to the man cave, by the way, I got dove bars. Just <laughs> like you, you start making phone calls and going, why am I going to the main game? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's normally a good time, you know, from the standpoint of, of having a good conversation. And, and, you know, and, and I must say that uh, in, in, in the years that, that I've had this position, you know, I've always counted on you as an advisor and a mentor for everything we've done at Inspira and how we've grown. You've always been there. You race that buggy pretty quickly these days. You got to make sure you get out of the way when you're coming down the ramp. But, um, you know, I, I, and I appreciate very dearly, and I know we have a number of our board members here um, who also appreciate everything you've done for us. But you've got to stop getting these awards. I'm getting tired of coming to this. Place. <laughs> <laughs> so again, congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Jimmy, uh, we're going to need your help here a little bit. So without further ado, we're going to introduce James Edward George, MDJD, my friend, mentor, and brother, to give us a few words. distract me. <laughs> There's usually bad words said between yep. the two. <laughs>
been a privilege to have in the room the CEOs from Inspira and members of the board, as well as Virtua and as well as Jefferson, New Jersey, and my friends from across the river at, at McGee. And another individual in the room who's a good friend and a, another CEO in this state, and I want him to stand and give away Alan Lieber, who's the president of Atlantic <laughs> Overlook Hospital in Southern New Jersey. Joe Devine bought Alan's time. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> a joke, Joe. <laughs> so, and, and I, I want to acknowledge uh, Katie McGee and Ray Angelini, the co hosts for this event. They did a wonderful job. And, you know, I've enjoyed the evening, and I intentionally did not rehearse any comments because I like the excitement of not knowing what the hell I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, I certainly want to thank all of the Boys and Girls Club folks. Uh, I want to thank the guests who've come in from a distance, including Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, and I know there was something else, but uh, uh, I took a lot of speech therapy when I was an inpatient. <laughs> and, and I liked the game of speech therapy because the speech therapists would always try to trick you up. You know, their job was to see how brain damaged you really were. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a challenge, and I wasn't so good at it <laughs> at the beginning of this journey, as Dr. Potter can attest. What did I get wrong? A scissors versus... You wouldn't answer. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't answer, but I've gotten much better since, and one of the tests for me was of whether I would remember people's names tonight. And hey, I thought I did a pretty good job of remembering people's <laughs> names. So that was exciting and gratifying to me. Uh, but there's, I've enjoyed a lot of love and support from my wife, Mary, uh, and my children, and my sisters, and my physician and other colleagues, including Dr. Bonner, Dr. Levin, Gene uh, uh, Johnson, did I miss anybody? <laughs> Nick Dalsey, who, who were present looking over my shoulder when I was only there uh, bodily and, and not between the years. And I drew great comfort from knowing they were there to, to watch over me. And you know the old saying, one door closes, another door opens. Uh, when the door started to open at, when I was an inpatient, I had done maybe a little bit of painting, ever so little, before my injury. And one day, uh, probably six weeks post-traumatic uh, brain and spinal cord injury, a very lovely young lady it comes into my room at the hospital pushing a man-sized Sears industrial cart which contained all of her paint supplies and canvases and that was Julie Nolan. Julie, give a wave to everybody. And, and Julie innocently asked me, would you like to paint? Now, I was sitting in my bed, really still figuring out what the hell is coming next. And I was right-handed before I fell and injured myself. I was right-handed. And now, I had to figure out how to become left-handed. And Julie worked with me, challenged me, 
to use my left hand to move acrylic paints across the canvas. And we've saved all of my work from the beginning because it was a, a very dark experience. And the paintings reflect that. And over time, I was able to bring color together. And color is what excites me. And from looking at other people, look at the stuff that my left upper extremity has done, also seem to be attracted to the colors. And, and I owe you a great debt, Julie, because if you hadn't come in the room, I think painting would have been the last thing I, I would have thought about. And so art does heal. It's helped heal me. Painting is now another passion in addition to my uh, current involvement with our clients and the other boards on which I sit. Painting is a very important part of my life. And if I'm not painting two or three days a week, I go into artistic withdrawal. <laughs> and I need to paint. So I don't know how that happens, but it happened to me and I'm eternally grateful for it. So I want to, on behalf of all the children, who we interact with, I, on behalf of them, I want to thank all of you for coming together this evening and building these bridges to these young people. And I have felt a tremendous amount of love in this room, and I, I eternally thank all of you. And I want to thank our Master Ceremonies, Dr. Palmer. Yeah. I've never heard him speak that briefly. <laughs> Do you remember you got an award and you sat in front of everyone and said, I've never been at a loss for words. Tonight, I'm at a loss for words. Wow, I'm impressed. Congratulations, Dr. James George. generous spirit and thank you for your generosity. We're, we're so proud to have Dr. George's honoree. We're so thankful for everyone who's come here tonight. We also want to thank uh, Katie McGee who uh, did a fantastic job making all this event. We want to thank our staff, certainly, and uh, Patty Withington who's our uh, CEO. Girls Club who was here at the CM. So we have a little token of appreciation that we'd like to give to Dr. George. In your hand. In your hand. In your hand. <laughs> okay, Thank you. Dr. George, I really cannot tell anybody how much I fun I've had over the last several months. I would I would work on something and he'd take it from me and he'd say, this is really good. I'm just gonna cross out everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect. I really appreciate that. Huh? But we had a great time. Thank you so much for all of the effort, for being with the boys and girls, for appreciating the boys and girls so much. That meant the world to us. We have a very small gift for you today, but we will be following up with a collage of all these pictures. We yeah. want to share with you how happy our children are that you are in their lives. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay. Thanks for everybody. Thank for being here. Guess what? Drive carefully. You get to go home. Thank you.